Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a triple threat video for you guys because we're going to do a dual perfumers portfolio. We're starting to get past the big guns, although I am saving some of the biggest names uh, still kind of um, on the bench for a rainy day. But um, I want to talk about two perfumers that really were big in, excuse me, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and those two perfumers are going to be Harry Fremont and Martine Gross. Um, so I both have, I have a couple, I have two from Gross and I have uh, four from Harry Fremont that I want to talk to you about. But the reason that I called this a triple threat video is um, I have an unboxing, a surprise unboxing. A box came today uh, and as you can see, I was at work. It was the first day that I was at work uh, since I wrote it down, actually. The piece of paper was still on my desk. July 29th of 2021. I've been working from home actually since March of 2020, but I went into the office a couple days in 2021. Um, and then they promptly said, don't come back, keep working from home. Uh, so I returned today. Uh, as a trial run, kind of in preparation to return in full next month. Um, and I say all that to say that's the reason why I am dressed a little snazzier. Um, that's the reason why I'm actually wearing a watch. And that is the reason why this is happening at 8 o'clock at night and 8.30. And I started my day at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was at work. So 13-hour um, day. Uh, I did manage to get myself a lovely mango lassie, so I am refreshed and hydrated and ready to go. So, let's kick this video off with the unboxing, shall we? I think I know what this is, although I have made some purchases lately. So this could be a couple things, but I have an idea. Oh god, I hope this isn't a lot of work, because they, they really pack this. Uh, okay. Well, I think it's what I think it is, so I'm excited to talk to you guys about this fragrance because it is a rare one. And, as you're getting to find out, I like the rare, discontinued, hard-to-find fragrances, but I also know when to trust the noses of people that I trust, okay? And... This came up a couple times, actually, people talking about how it is, you know, one of their favorite fragrances of all time, people wearing it, um, and, you know, people who I trust put this as, so here's the package, um, so let's see if I can unbox this without too much mess, and I didn't bring my handy dandy unboxing knife because it's still downstairs. It's not in my upstairs office, so I'm at a disadvantage. I gotta tear into this like a beast. Okay, here we go. So, this, you might ask, what in the world is this? Well, I will tell you. These are 10 5ml minis of Inez Silver. I believe it's pronounced Einer. Um, let's see. Etienne Einer. That's how you, that's how it is read right there. For those of you that are not too happy with my French accent, right there. Etienne Einer. I believe this um, gentleman was originally German, but I could be mistaken. Um, the house is a fragrance house that has these little old gems like this. Oh, wow. Smells right up my alley. Um, and, and look at, I mean, obviously this is a... Um, this is a long discontinued fragrance. This actually um, is a pretty heavy bottle for a mini. 
Uh, there's some heft to it. There's more heft to this than some modern fragrances uh, caps nowadays. And um, let's see what the notes are because I haven't worn it. I'm not going to do a first impression today, but I might wear it as my scent of the day tomorrow. Um, I have to decant these because these are splashes, but here are the notes just to talk a little bit about this. This came out in 1984, my favorite decade, uh, and it's discontinued, obviously, like I said. It is, um, the notes are bergamot, fennel, green notes, uh, juniper, lemon, spruce, carnation, jasmine, patchouli, cedar, cinnamon, castorium, ooh, castorium, labdanum, leather, moss, musk, and frankincense. This sounds absolutely right up my alley. Um, there are zero reviews on Parfumo, but I got 10 of these little bad boys, uh, and what I did, how I... How I fell into this 10, and this just gives you kind of an example as to how my mind works, uh, I said, I'll take five uh, at this particular price that I wanted them at that I thought was fair, because they were originally asking about 50% more than what I wanted. And they said, nope, we'll sell it to you for this. And I said, no, I don't want it for that. I want it for my original price. So if you give it to me for the price that I originally asked for, I'll take all 10. And the guy said, okay. So sometimes you get more juice if you bargain a little bit. And I am not beneath bargaining. Uh, I think it's a smart way to try to uh, accumulate more juice. And sometimes if they have multiple bottles, you know, if you see a seller that has multiple bottles of a bottle that you are actively looking for, um, instead of just buying one, see if they'll get a, give you a better deal if you buy two. Or if they have three different fragrances that you are looking for, see if they'll give you a better deal if you buy all three. Um, and so I will do that from time to time. That is one of my tactics to accumulate juice. So instead of just getting um, five of these 5ml minis, I got ten. And I got a pretty good price. It was respectable. Uh, especially for a long, discontinued, hard to find... I got 50 ml of a fragrance that um, there were no full bottles listed anywhere on eBay. Only these minis. And um, some of these actually are different, which is interesting. Um, and you know I'm all about pointing out differences in fragrances. So you can see that this one does not have any information on the back. One of them does, and one of them doesn't. Um, so anyways, I'll decant these, and maybe it'll be my scent of the day tomorrow, but I'm very excited to try that because some people's noses who I really trust um, basically said that uh, this would be in their top 10, which really says something if you put something in your in your top 10 of all time, especially something I had never heard of before this. So. I'm all about uh, trusting people um, that I know have proper fragrance experience uh, and know what they're talking about. You know, I really do try to listen to the feedback. I, I've made some amazing buys that way. Uh, so that is the unboxing. We'll do. I'll, I'll wear it tomorrow as my scent of the day and, and give you guys a true uh, early impression so you can decide whether it's worth hunting down or not. So let's talk about the two perfumers, but before we do, let's do what we always do. Let's do Scent of the Day. Uh, and Scent of the Day is, I again, first day back in the office, I wanted to wear something I really love and enjoy. And even though this is not the most technically best Guerlain, even though it's not the most technically sound, even though some people wouldn't put it anywhere near the best gear lawns, and I wouldn't either. It's nowhere near the Mitsukos, the Darbys, the, you know, you just name them, Heritage. It's nowhere near any of those, but I still love wearing this fragrance. It's a discontinued fragrance called Sange Dumbois de Et. Sange Dumbois de Et. And... 
Sanj was basically repackaged into a fragrance called Bois Mysterio, which I think even that fragrance is now discontinued. But this is one of my favorite in this collection. I love these old bottles. Um, I mean, look at the detailing on the old bottles with the bees, the Guerlain B. It's just stunning. Um, thick glass. I mean, um, I know Guerlain does a lot of repackaging and stuff like that. And the bottle that they put this into is kind of an iteration, a take on the B bottle. But for me, um, my money is on this bottle. I love these bottles. But alas, uh, it is no more. And But I'm glad to have the little bit that I have. This is a tester bottle that I have and I'm very glad to have the juice and I wore the hell out of it today. And this fragrance actually did something special for me because it made me really start using Parfumo more because originally I would strictly use Fragrantica years ago. And if you look on Fragrantica, there are notes like Oud and stuff like that listed and I never got an Oud note, not a true Oud note. I got this Middle Eastern Accord with, um, you know, the bay leaf or laurel as they call it, um, and, and then a big dose of leather. And I always thought of it as a leather fragrance, but I went to Parfumo and looked at the notes and sure enough, there is no oud listed at all. It's myrrh, big myrrh fragrance, uh, bay leaf, patchouli, saffron. The saffron in here is absolutely beautiful. Um, and neroli at the top, jasmine, cedar, and then this leather base that's just beautiful. And even though this is, like I said, not technically the best fragrance Guerlain ever made or anything, I just love wearing it. There's just something about it. Uh, I just, you know, it definitely is heavy spices though. Uh, there is this heavy spicy feel to it that it gives off. The mixture of the notes, the bay leaf, um, the myrrh gives this Middle Eastern, uh, you know, resinous, spicy fragrance with a beautiful leather note. If you think of this as a leather fragrance and not an oud fragrance, uh, there may be oud in it to, you know, work as a backbone, but you're not going to smell oud uh, in the traditional sense. This is not like wearing the night or anything like that, but this is in their Middle Eastern line, the... Um, Desert Gem, I forget what they call this line, um, Absolutes to Orient line. Um, and the Absolutes to Orient line is all about, you know, Middle Eastern take on uh, perfumes. And this one definitely has that Middle Eastern feel, but if you think of it when you wear it as a leather fragrance, it'll make a lot more sense, I think, to you. And... I just love wearing this fragrance. I'm going to be so sad when this is gone because I don't have a backup bottle of this. I actually tried to look for backup bottles today. And even on Bois Mysterio, the price is really expensive. It's hard to find a good, a good price on Bois Mysterio. So um, that is my scent of the day. So let's talk about these two perfumers, Martine Grasse and Harry Fremont. And I didn't really pick them willy-nilly. I picked them because... They were two perfumers that operate in the operated in the same time uh, segment. They both kind of competed in the uh, late 80s, 90s, um, and then with Harry Fremont, you'll see even into the 2000s. But Martin Gras, there's a um, interview that Pierre Bourdon did where he spoke for a couple hours on the record, and I believe I heard him say that Martin Gras ended up being one of the heads of one of the big houses or one of the big fragrance flavoring houses or maybe even one of the big houses like YSL. He could have become the head uh, uh, at YSL or something like that. There was some story I remember Pierre Bourdon talking about uh, where he talked about Martin Gras really uh, being in an important executive decision-making position. And um, he made a fragrance that is one of my all-time favorite fragrances. I have promised you guys that whenever I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a top 100 and I am agonizing over that list. I wish I could just flip, flip the switch, hit a thousand subscribers and do the video because it's killing me. 
you know, what goes here, what goes here, what goes at 11, what goes at 19, what goes at 99, what goes at 101 and just misses the list. It's horrible. Um, but I want it to be as accurate as possible. My favorite fragrances to wear, and this is definitely going to be up there. This is a fragrance called Lapidus Porom from 1987. This fragrance is, um, it's, it's so 80s because it's so over the top. And what I mean by over the top is it has all these insane ingredients that you would think, no way does that ever work. Um, there's pineapple, basil, bergamot, tarragon, juniper, lemon, lavender. Lavender is important to this fragrance, but to me, the honey, um, that animalic honey starts to take over. And then you get this huge dose of oak moss, especially in the old, um, the old splash bottles uh, that are, they don't make these older splash bottles anymore. This is the Eau de Toilette, obviously. I don't buy aftershaves. Um, but the, the twist is, is that it has all these ingredients, like I mentioned the fruity pineapple, the green notes, the lavender. So there's this cleanliness element, but it mixes with this dirty element from the animalic honey. It feels like maybe even there's a little bit of castorium in the base. Uh, there's definitely a huge slug of oak moss. Um, and then there's tobacco, there's amber, sandalwood, cedar, tonka, patchouli, musk, rose, pine. I mean, there's everything. Um, and you would think, how can a fragrance that has everything work? How does it dry? How does it change? How does it feel? How does it, how does it wear? And even though some people say that this is obnoxious, this is loud, this is just stereotypical, disgusting 80s, I love it. I love it to death. I love that, that you know, fruitiness and greenness and dirtiness and honey. I love honey. Honey is one of my favorite ingredient notes of all time. And then there's this smooth rosewood. There's just, uh, it, it's a fragrance that, again, just doesn't seem like it should work. It seems like this would absolutely bomb, that this would be disgusting, but it's not. It's so um, enjoyable for me to wear. Now, some people may say, that's great, but I can't wear this in today's modern age, and I respect you for that, but I will. I will wear this. I will wear it. I will enjoy it, because uh, that's the reason I wear fragrances for me. Uh, I don't wear them for other people. If someone else gives me a compliment, if someone doesn't give me a compliment, if someone says, oh, you stink, I don't care. I'll take that. I'll take that just in the exact same way as I would take, wow, you smell amazing. I just take it in stride. And if I want to wear this, I'll wear it. I'll wear this to work. I don't care. Um, so Lapidus Porum is one of the quintessential masculines. It's right up there with Koros and Teus. Uh, joint. I mean, it's right there with those animalic fragrances that I love, Furio. Uh, but this is a little bit different from those. Um, you know, it just, it sits in a different part of the animalic fragrance world to me because it does so many crazy things that you just don't expect a fragrance like of this caliber to do. And if you can find a vintage, get it for sure. There are differences. I have done a comparison video on my channel um between the modern and the vintage and i will tell you even though i prefer the vintage the modern juice is amazing for for a modern for the um you know the way that the house of jacques bogart has preserved these fragrances with all of the regulations is just astronomically um so high it feels so high it feels like uh, they were able to almost like work a miracle, like they don't follow Ifra, like they still, you know, put some of these crazy high amounts of oak moss in the um, in the original. Now, I, I did a comparison so you can check it out, but um, for a house like Jacques Bogart that can keep their fragrances at 10 or $20 a, uh, a fragrance, to have something like this still feel close to the original with all of the terrible reformulations that happen over to you, the years is a huge accomplishment to me. I don't know how they do it. Um, so I've got two of those splashes. Once they're gone, I'll probably just use my original bottle, to be honest with you, because they're getting harder and harder and harder to find. Now, 
The other fragrance that Martin Gras did that I own, so I only have two. He doesn't have very many fragrances because uh, I think he kind of went into the executive business side of things. At you know, he he released a couple fragrances, but you know, he doesn't have this huge portfolio. It is a fragrance by the House of Cerruti called 1881. Now this is the modern version. And actually, I'm going to tell you something that might blow your mind, but the modern version is quite good. Um, I would love to compare it. Sorry about the bright light. It's dark in here, and I need the bright light to um, for you guys to see me. And uh, so it's hard to read the bottle, but the bottom says, Distributed by Coty Prestige. Um, somehow... Some way they did an amazing job keeping this it's somewhat intact. This is just the original. They have a million flankers. The one that I like the most is called Bella Notte. Um, that was an Olivier Cresp fragrance that is now discontinued, I think. Um, but 1881 Poron, um, it feels like Martine Gross's take on this. One foot in the 80s, one foot in the 90s DNA, because this is a 1990s release. So if you like fragrances like um, Creed's uh, Royal Water, for example, or even Arafa, even though this is much closer to Royal Water, Royal Water has this, um, it has this beautiful juniper berry note, and this opens with lavender, um, Basil, juniper berry, and the note of cypress, which is heavily underused in, in masculine perfumes. So, you know, it feels like um, it feels like there's a lot of green, uh, you know, herbal aromatic touches, but then it starts to almost roll out the red carpet for the 90s without becoming a pure aquatic, which is why I like those early 90s releases like this. Um, I mentioned Royal Water, which is towards the end of the 90s, but Arolfa is a good example of one that uh, has one foot in the 80s with that pine note, um, but also one in the 90s with the melon. And this does that with that very sharp green pine, um, you know, feel. Uh, but then it mixes in some... Um, some very fresh notes. There's some fruitiness. There's black currant in here. There's bergamot. Uh, this is a perfect summer scent to me. Um, perfect summer scent because it has that 80s, you know, masculine oak moss, pine, sandalwood, but it's fresh enough to wear in summer. It's not super heavy. It wears light, but it stays interesting. And actually, longevity is quite good for a, for a freshie. I would consider this kind of a freshie. This easily could have been... If you guys watched my um, sport, I did a This Is Not A Top 10 Sport video. This easily could have been on there to me. Um, if you like fragrances like Creed's Royal Water, check out Chiruti 1881. The original, if you want kind of a twist on this DNA, try to get that Bella Notte if you can. I think it's discontinued, but bottles are still floating around. They're still, they can still be had. Okay, so let's go to Harry Fremont. I have four fragrances from Harry. And uh, we're going to begin with 1994, and we're going to begin with uh, probably my favorite aquatic fragrance, if you will. This is Polo Sport, and this did get a shout out on my sport fragrances. I almost forgot it, uh, and it literally has sport in the name, so I'm glad I remembered. Um, but if you can get the Cosmere bottle, and again, I've talked about this before, but you know, I want to say it again for somebody that maybe didn't watch the previous video. If you're going to buy these older fragrances, make sure you get the correct uh, distributor. That's the most important thing because reformulations are done by distributors. So when distributors change, reformulations happen normally. And um, whenever... Polo, Ralph Lauren uh, switched from Cosmere, which this is a Cosmere bottle. You probably won't be able to see it with the very bright light. Um, but I'll try to show you here. It actually says Cosmere right there in the middle underneath all that text. Uh, and you can also tell by the silver atomizer. The new atomizers are light blue in color. They're this very blue plastic looking uh, atomizer. 
and it's the distributor is like Fine Fragrances Inc. or, or something like that, International Fragrances or whatever. It's not Cosmere. So if you can buy a bottle of this, even if you have to pay an extra 20, 30, 40 bucks, get the Cosmere version. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, reformulations have killed many fragrances over the years. That's one of my that's one of my biggest, you know, sticks. That's why I have the vintage of Lapidus Pour Homme. That's why I'm into vintage because I truly believe that the distributor matters and um to truly recreate the fragrance, the what the fragrance was meant to be by the perfumer, get the Cosmere version. This has this, it's just, it's, it's the scent of, of basically my teenage years. Um, it's aldehydes, it's lavender, uh, there's this mintiness. It's so easy to wear, especially on a very warm day, uh, but it's also complex. There's a lot of notes going on, a lot of different accords. Um, there's a beautiful narrowly note here, by the way, which is an expensive note. It's not cheap to do a good narrowly. And, um, there is this floral heart. Uh, so there's cyclamen, geranium, jasmine mixed with this freshness of ginger. Ginger adds this, um, ginger adds this almost sprightly, um, the sprightly freshness, the zing. And um, there's this very smooth rosewood. And then there's a seagrass note, which is a very strange note to have in a perfume. Um, that's why I say this is my favorite aquatic. I wouldn't really consider it aquatic. It's not a true aquatic, but it does have that seagrass note, which um, will give you the vibe of being an aquatic without being a true aquatic. That's why I like this fragrance. So. If you want something easy to wear, especially for the summer, with the summer rolling around, this is a fantastic fragrance. Um, one of my favorite sport fragrances of all time. If you want to hear about some of the other ones, go watch the video from a couple days ago. Um, or a day ago. But um, this is one to definitely put on the list, and this is from Harry Fremont. Now, continuing with fragrances I like to wear in the summer... Uh, next is one I've talked about on my channel before. I'm going to talk about it again. Someone said I keep showing the same bottles over and over again, but hey, it's my collection. Uh, these are the ones I want to highlight, and this needs to be highlighted because there's still bottles around. It's this spicy, uh, woody scent that I love wearing in summer, and Harry Fremont basically did ver something very similar to uh, Polo Sport. They smell nothing alike, okay? Uh, but what he did is he created a fragrance that I view as a fresh spring summer scent, but it's very complex. Hard to do fresh fragrances complex that aren't just like bergamot, you know, or, um, you know, pink pepper, bergamot, and vetiver in the base or something. It's hard to do something different. And that's what both of these do for me. This one's called Catalyst for men um, in the beautiful test tube speaker bottle. And this is um, distributed by Halston Fragrances, Inc. I don't know if you will be able to see that, um, but trust me, it's Halston Fragrances, Inc. And um, as far as the way that I would describe these two is if you're kind of a younger guy and you want something a little bit more playful, go for Polo Sport. If you're someone mature, uh, if you dress like this when you go to work and polo sport is too playful, you want someone to take you more seriously, but you want it to be different from what's being pumped out now. You don't just want to wear blue to Chanel or, um, you know, something like that. Check out Catalyst. See if you can find an old bottle of Catalyst when the distributor was Halston Fragrances, Inc. And uh, this is long discontinued, but I'll tell you what. This is, this just screams refinement in class. Even though the test two beaker bottle isn't, you know, a Roja Dove bedazzled, you know, jewels on the cap and $500 and all that stuff, the scent itself, forget the presentation, the scent itself just screams refinement. Uh, it just screams uh, maturity. It screams, you know, I know I have good taste and I know it kind of thing. It um, 
it's so good. Um, the note listing is huge. It's like 27 notes or something. But um, mainly you get this citrus green. The green touches are beautiful because you get this basil with galbanum and tarragon, which is like the, the trinity, the three holy trinity green at the top. Uh, and then you're hit with mint. It's fresh, citrusy, floral. So there's a big floral element to this. Narcissus, tuberose, rose. Um, and then there's a vodka note. The only other perfume that I have in my collection that has vodka is one that I just got. And I'm going to be talking about it more as the days go on. Ungaro Porlome 3. This is the... Um, this is the older bottle, but I don't think it's the original bottle, if that makes sense. It's, it's, it's an old enough bottle where there's a shorter ingredient list, but it's not the original. And um, this has a vodka note in it. But other than that, vodka note in perfumery is very rare. You don't see vodka used very often. Um, but it's just the mixture of the freshness, the citrus. That's why I say he, he did a similar trick to Polo Green, but he made this much more mature much more um, dressed up, much more buttoned up, if you will. Um, you know, this is a guy who is maybe up and coming, um, maybe just graduated college, the world is his oyster, he has the whole future to look ahead of him. This is a guy that has been saving for 20 years, has a nice nest egg, has a nice house, good car, you know, he... Um, takes care of his family, that kind of thing, you know. At, he's at a different stage of his life. That's what I think about when I wear Catalyst versus Polo Sport. I wear them both in the summer, both in the spring and summer, but um, this is playful, this is serious to me. Even though the bottle doesn't scream serious, it's a serious scent. Don't let the bottle fool you. Don't be fooled by, I've said this many a times, do not be fooled by um, packaging, whether it's fancy packaging, don't let a fancy packaging make you think it's the best fragrance in the world. And don't let a packaging like this make you think it's going to be, you know, a high schooler's science experiment because it's not. This is an amazing, complex scent. Harry Fremont was really on top of his game in 1994. Then we're going to go to 1999. And in 1999, he created a fragrance that's also discontinued, also highly sought after, although I'm not the biggest fan. And that's called Very Valentino for men. Now, this is a good fragrance. I don't want to give the impression that it's not. But this fragrance has a problem to me. The problem is it came out um, one year after this fragrance. Dolce & Gabbana's By Man. Okay, now by man and very Valentino are very similar. They're two peas in a pod. Um, they both kind of try to get to the same place. They get in their car, they drive, they try to go to the same destination. This does it so much better to my nose. This is still a good fragrance. Um, they've added like this anise factor to this. So Harry Fremont, I think saw what a beautiful creation this was and wanted to take that DNA and kind of add a twist of his own to it. So what he did is he took that DNA by Dolce & Gabbana and for Valentino, um, also an Italian house, added this anise, kept the tobacco, kept the lavender, kept the nutmeg, kept the sage, you know, the facets of by man that, you know, really give you that DNA profile, but he just kind of changed a little bit here and there. The anise, the carnation, you know, little touches like that. And for me, for whatever reason, I, en I enjoy it. But when I wear this, I'm just like, wow, this is, I'm in awe of the beauty of this scent. This one, I'm going, okay, they obviously tried to kind of copy this. They just didn't do it as well. That's the way that I would put it. And maybe I'm being too harsh on it. Maybe I even have a different 
distributor because I, I do believe distributors matter. And my bottle is a Unilever, Unilever bottle. Um, copyright Unilever Cosmetics. So maybe the original one that wasn't Unilever when it came out in 1999 or whatever it was is the better one to go for. I don't know. Um, but if I went head to head, bottle to bottle, this just annihilates it. I would trade this in for another bottle of this any day. Um, so that's that. Now, if you can't find this, could very Valentino be a replacement? Absolutely, 100%. This could be a replacement. Um, but for me, I would take by man all day, every day. So uh, that is, that's how I feel about that. Okay, last one. And it's a doozy because it's one of my favorite leather scents of all time. He created this with Jacques Cavalier in 2007. Um, this is Tuscan Leather. And Rich Mitch described this the other day when he was, he didn't describe it, he described his reaction to this when he smelled Hyrax for the first time. He said it gave him kind of the same reaction of what, what is this that I'm smelling? And this was that revolutionary at the time. It was like, what? Um, that raspberry saffron with leather and black suede and then that cigarette accord like you're at a pool hall sitting on a couch with a bunch of you know burn holes in it people are smoking uh you can smell the leather from the couch <sighs> um it gives off this there's also this um amber in the base i talked about the amber in the base a little bit in one of my this is not a top 10 amber videos recently and um, frankincense, um, and it's just a home run. I mean, I get the raspberry, almost like the raspberry in this feels almost like they took like a bunch of raspberries, plopped them in a blender and turned it into a puree. And you get this raspberry, saffron, leather, it's just gorgeous. Um, and when this bottle is gone, sadly, I probably will never own another bottle because I do own Clive Christian C for Men, which smells very, very similar to this. So you can see my juice level is about right here. So I only have about, oh, 35 ml left. Um, but I'll cherish this. I'll wear it in the cold. I usually wear this in the colder weathers, but sometimes I just have to wear this in the uh, heat. Now... If you can't afford this, or Clive Christian C, which is very expensive, um, I usually don't advocate for clones, but one of the best clones I've ever smelled in my life is uh, La Yukawam by Rasasi. This is a fantastic interpretation of um, Tuscan leather. Fantastic. Um, again, I usually don't go for clones because I'm not a big fan of copying someone's work like that. Uh, there are a lot of brands that copy people, obviously, but um, this, for 35, 40 bucks, if you can find a 100 ml boss, this is a 75 ml bottle, sorry. But 75 ml, I mean, I have this DNA, unless you're just a, unless you're like a perfume detective, you're not gonna tell the difference most of the time, to my nose. Um, now, the, Differences lie in the fact that uh, the fruit note here feels almost like more fruit puree with other fruits, not just raspberries. It almost gives off like this berry puree vibe, like they also took strawberries, blackberries, you know, stuff like that, mixed it with the raspberries. This just feels pure raspberry to me. So that's kind of the difference. Other than that, it is... It, it's so good. I mean, it's, um, uh, I have to, have to give them a shout out. So because of the fact that I have all three, I'll probably never own a bottle of this, but this gets extra love for being unique, for taking a chance, for creating something that really took the industry by storm. So Harry Fremont, these, these videos are all about giving props to the perfumer, you know, props to the artist, um, that actually created the fragrance. Obviously they had a brief you know, they worked with Tom Ford and all that good stuff, but um, they were the one that 
measured and um, made sure all the cuts were correct and made sure the dosing was right and all that good stuff. And so Harry Fremont and Martin Gras for creating these masterpieces, they definitely deserve to be recognized. Um, if you guys have other fragrances from these perfumers that you know and love and think I should check out, leave them below. If you have experience with the fragrances I talked about, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Um, a like and a subscription helps, but it's not necessary. Uh, but once I hit a thousand subscribers, I am going to do that top 100 countdown ranked, which is going to be an absolute beating. In fact, I might even go back uh, as the years go on and this channel matures and I start doing more individual reviews and rank some of my this is not a top 10. Rank my this is not a top 10 tobacco. This is not a top 10 amber. Actually rank them um, in, in order of my preference, which I'm finding out to be as harder than it seems because, you know, I, um, I'm struggling with small little details. What should be in the top, you know, 15, what should be in the top 20? What, I mean, I really have to put thought into this. So it's taking a lot of time. The video itself is going to take a lot of time to shoot. Um, but, um, I am excited to do it. I think you guys will really enjoy it. You'll really get a good feel for my taste if you don't already have it. Um, you know, you'll really get a good feel for my taste once we do a, a top 100 rank. So, uh, perfumers portfolio in the books after a long day's work. If I look tired, it's because I am, but I'm um, very excited to try this little gem tomorrow. So look forward to a uh, early impressions video on that. And I will be working from home, so... Uh, you won't get a collared shirt tomorrow, but uh, you will get a video dropped in the middle of the day like you're used to. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Have a great evening, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.